I found these in 2000 when Ralph Nader was the president. And, uh, I served his presidency and then started to find out about the things. Uh, and then in 2006, uh, I helped Craig Burke when he was the governor candidate in Nevada. Uh, I advised his campaign and got his only um, debate uh, appearance uh, when the American Institute of Architects uh, sponsored a debate. Uh, they originally were excluding the third party candidates, uh, but I, I was a member and I, I called them and asked why they were doing that, and they, uh, they changed their policy and, and included him. Uh, with the Democrat Republicans, so that was his only debate appearance. Um, and then in 2010, uh, we were in a similar position in Nevada, trying to get some people to run for statewide office with very limited resources. Uh, so I did to run uh, for governor of Nevada. Uh, we only had about 4,000 people in our party at that point, and uh, it was a crowded field. There, there were seven candidates, and also Nevada has none of the above. Uh, none of the above came in third place. Um, it's kind of scary. And I used to support it, but it actually injured third party candidates in that race. Uh, it was really hard for any of us to get uh, even 1% because of none of the above eating, eating all the refuse votes. Um, so then I made the decision to come to California. And we, we have this top two primary situation, which it's bad, but in this race, it, there is some potential. Um, there are currently three Democrats running, and now two Republicans as of uh, October 30th. Another Republican has seriously entered the race. So they're breaking the corporate vote up for us, which is very nice of them. Um, however, the price point for statewide offices is, is relatively high still. Um, the incumbent spent 300000 roughly, above board, um, to retain her seat. And now it's an open, it's an open seat, theoretically, to the highest bidder. Um, there are three, three high bidders right now. Um, two Democrats, have, uh, one has about $300,000, uh, the other has $2 million. Uh, the Republican is, uh, I think, a multimillionaire, so he's probably good. Um, there's a second Republican, I haven't seen his forecast, but... Um, I, I'm uh, operating with less than that. Um, I initially thought that we could run an effective statewide campaign with about $100,000. And that's where I'd like to see us get to. If we can field candidates with $100,000 in a multi-candidate race in an open primary, the three Democrats are splitting their vote. And if they got about equal split on the vote, there's actually enough decline the state voters to outpace what their shared vote would be. So, so, so I think there are enough votes there for a strong third party, you know, John Anderson and Ralph Nader to get that third party vote. And, and so that's the goal. Um, the question is, is, is any of our, are any of our statewide candidates, you know, going to be able to do that? Because we're all in the same vote. And I, and I think the answer is, yeah, the one that has about $100,000 has enough direct name recognition like Luis or someone like Luis um, or someone who's just in the right race. I mean, in a pretty good race, it's, it's, it's kind of a wonky race. People don't understand what the Secretary of State really does as in talking to voters. Um, many of them don't know what it does, haven't thought about it. Some of them don't even know that it's an elected position. Um, so, so there's some voter education that's happening, but and. Um, the discussion about whether it's good to run multiple candidates or fewer cabinets, uh, the good thing about running more candidates, regardless of the outcome, is there's, there's a lot of voters that are just checked out and not really paying attention. So, so every time we run a candidate, you know, it's an education moment, uh, potentially. Um, but I, I'm, still, I'm still in the place where I was back in July when I announced, uh, I think if I can get enough traction, enough money, I can maybe squeak in there, um, and the, the corporate candidates are loading up the race. So I'm saying, you know, I'm hoping they run more, more candidates. Um, I'm afraid that the reason, I suspect the reason that the second Republican has entered the race is he looked at the map and understood that now they have a chance of having the top two spots. Because, uh, you know, if they split their vote equally, uh, we could wind up with two Republicans. Um, I'm not going to make any value judgments about that, but uh, the reason I'm doing this is 
I think it's really important that we continue to run candidates who are bought paid for. Uh, you know, they aren't paid for. We thought that somebody, I mean, it's, it's great to have proportional representation as a goal and get some greens in to the legislature, but we've got to have somebody executive. We've got to have somebody in there, you know, in the house, that, or, the, or I guess the reverse of the house. Um, we, we've got to have somebody at each, each branch of government, and we have to show them that, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to press into that. So. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do, and I hope you'll support uh, this candidacy. Um, and I'll, I'll do my best to earn it. If you have any questions for me, please uh, please contact me today, or uh, I'm available. Uh, the website's lowdavidcurse.org. Uh, just call me up. Um, there's technology that's available to us, and I'm using it as much as I can. I, you know, I've got a YouTube channel, Twitter feed. I'm going to use everything I can. I think I'm going to as well. So, Thank you, and I hope we consider endorsing the fantasy.